must be here for the Lighting the Way program, right? Ah, of course. Give me one moment, I'll be right with you. Hello again. I just looked into something more comfortable. Hello, welcome to the historic Richmond Town YouTube page. Thank you for joining us for this online version of our popular workshop, Lighting the Way. This is part of our Arts and Culture in Quarantine series. Traditionally, students would be led through the village by a costumed interpreter and then participate in a candle dipping activity. Today, I'm going to be making a candle using modern 21st century devices and tools and implements, much of which you can find in your classroom or at home. This is an activity meant to be replicated at home, uh, but it should be done with the safety of adults involved. Hundreds of students participate in this program every single year, with program support generously provided by Con Edison, to whom we tip our hats. Thank you so much for joining us. This all starts with a simple question. Where does light come from? Good answer. Maybe you said, from a lighter. Or, from a match. Or you might have said, from that light switch. Or maybe you said, from the sun. Ow. All those would be true. Today, we live in a world that is electrified, that is filled with electric light. Thomas Edison perfected the incandescent light bulb in 1878, which is about 140 years ago. But what about before that? How did people light their homes when it got dark before electricity? Hmm. Ooh, pick me, pick me! Ah, uh, um, uh, fire? One of you said fire, and that's a very good answer. For thousands of years, human beings have used fire to fulfill their most basic needs. What does a fire provide? That's right. It provides heat and it also provides light. And when you think about it, a candle is a small flame, a small piece of fire. A candle gives off a lot of light, but not a lot of heat. Whereas a roaring fire in the fireplace produces a lot of heat, but not so much light. What do you use candles for at home? I wonder if you might draw one from memory. A candle is made from wax and it's molded into a shape. Usually it's a cylindrical shape. It's round in shape. And inside that wax is a piece of string. We'll call it a wick. And the wick goes all the way through the candle to the bottom. The flame rests on the wick and slowly burns through the candle wax. The more wax, the longer the candle will burn. So you might say the wax is the fuel for the candle. In the 1700s and 1800s, people on Staten Island would have used fire and other devices in their work and in their homes. Let's explore some of those devices together. First, we'll start with the tinsmith shop. Tin is a silver-colored metal. You might have some tin at home. Think of a tin can. A tinsmith is a person who made goods using tin plate. In the 1700s and 1800s, many lighting devices were made by tinsmiths. Tin plate is light, easy to cut and shape, inexpensive, and it is reflective. Reflective is kind of like a reflection in a mirror. When light shines on tin, it looks brighter in reflection. This is a candle holder made of tin. What might you use this for? That's right, maybe to find your way through the house at night when it's dark. You might say that this candlestick is portable, meaning you can take it with you. Let's examine another example. This is a tin sconce. The long back of the sconce is attached to a wall, and a candle is inserted in the front. Candle light is reflected off the back side. Now, could you use a sconce like a candle holder? Maybe you could, but you wouldn't get as much light. The candlestick allows the light to go all the way around, whereas the sconce, the light is blocked in the back so the light can reflect off the wall. So these are similar, but they're also different, and they have different purposes. Now, candles are made of wax, as we know, but where does the wax come from? Hmm. Well, there are many different ways to create wax. One of them is beeswax, 
which is naturally made from bees. Another kind of wax is derived from tallow, which is made from animal fat. Another form of fuel for lighting is oil. Let's look at some examples of oil lamps at historic Richmond Town. The Stevens Black House and the Stevens General Store have a variety of lighting implements inside. In the 1800s, the hunting of whales increased dramatically in the United States. Whales were prized for their meat and blubber and for oil. It was discovered that whale oil, when burned, produced a bright flame and it did not smell. Can you imagine turning on a light switch and smelling a bad smell? This is an example of a whale oil lamp. What do you see? What do you think this is made of? You might notice there are two wicks, two flames coming out of this lamp. Whale oil was an expensive item, and the lamps that were made for whale oil were made of finer materials, like glass, seen here. Another form of fuel is kerosene oil. This is an example of a kerosene lamp. What do you see? What is different about the kerosene lamp as compared to the whale oil lamp? You might notice on the side of the lamp a small dial. This dial could be used to make the flame brighter, to push the wick up to make a bigger flame, or to push the wick down to make the flame dimmer and softer. The Stevens General Store is a great place to talk about lighting and the economics of lighting. Americans had to make all kinds of decisions based on the amount of resources they had and what was available to them, and also what their homes looked like, how they could best light their homes. It wasn't as easy as flicking a switch. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to make our candle. Okay, here's everything you're going to need to make your own candle at home. So I'm going to take this hard paraffin wax. We're going to take this solid and make it into a liquid again. To do that, we have to heat it up. So in the kettle it goes. All right, now the water is at a boil. So what we'll do now is we'll add our kettle with the wax inside into the boiling water. We're going to let that melt down for just a few minutes. We're going to make sure we can affix this wick to our jar. I'm going to attach a little glue dot. You can use a piece of glue and stick that right in the middle on the bottom, like so. The next step is to get the wick on the candle. This can be a little bit tricky. What you might do is take a straw, cut it down to size, there we go. So now the straw can fit through my little wick like so, okay, and I can go ahead and attach it to the glue dot like so. Now the great thing about a homemade candle is that it's not 100% perfect. It's an individual, just like you. Let's take a closer look here so we can see, oop, fogging up my lens. So it looks like our wax is melted. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn off the burner and we're going to remove this from the boiling pot and pour the wax into the candle. Next, remove the wax from the heating element. Add any essential oil or scent that you'd like to add. Then gently pour the wax into the jar almost all the way to the top. Then we're going to let the candle cool and harden over the next 20 or 25 minutes. So our candle has completely cooled. The wax, which became a liquid with the heat, is now cooled and has gone back to a solid. Clip our wick, like so. Remove our little holder, and now we have a completed homemade candle.
So there you have it. Now you can make a candle at home. Whereas today we think of candles as a way of making our homes cozy or beautiful or warm, candles were an essential way of lighting the homes of the American past. And it gives us a moment to think about how people lived. How could we do our homework in the dark? How could we cook or eat a meal in the dark? How would our activities, our lives, be led by lighting? Today we live in an age of electrified light in which lighting is extremely convenient and it's abundant. But that was not always the case. Lighting was a struggle, a battle against the elements, against the darkness. Take a moment today to think about how your life would be different if we did not have electrified light. Thank you so much for joining us for this online version of Lighting the Way, our workshop for kindergartners through third graders at Historic Richmond Town. Please stay tuned on our social channels for more content for arts and culture in quarantine. Program support generously provided by Con Edison.